Okay, so let's discuss the standard of refereeing at the 2023 Rugby World Cup so far. Now, we're about halfway through uh, the pool stages as I'm recording this video. Uh, obviously, Ireland will be playing South Africa later today in the, the highlight of, of this round of pool matches. So this is the, the, the clash that most uh, rugby fans have been looking forward to. But let's discuss the standard of refereeing, shall we, and, and um, some of the rule changes. So... A big discussion point has obviously been the, the TMO review over yellow and red cards uh, and they have an eight minute period within that first ten minutes in order to upgrade or downgrade. Now so far we have not seen a straight red. We've seen two yellows upgraded to reds. We haven't seen a straight red yet, uh, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if that is a directive from World Rugby uh, to give a little bit of leeway with the TMO, but we have seen a lot of uh, varying interpretations uh, with with head contact or foul play uh, upgrade or downgrade in that regard. Now, obviously, opening weekend we saw Tom Curry get a yellow, upgraded to a red, and then we saw the Chilean captain Segren, similar challenge, uh, get a yellow not upgraded to a red, and then we saw uh, Daisel uh, for Namibia against France uh, get a yellow upgraded to a red. And uh, we've seen others where especially in the Uruguay-Italy game where, uh, yeah, we saw some yellow cards, uh, but they weren't for head contact. And uh, one of the few times the TMI was called in to look at potential foul play, the on-field referee said it's a penalty only. Uh, it is a, a legitimate clear-out. Um, the Uruguayan player had actually made his own head contact with an Italian player on the floor, hence where, hence where he injured himself. And then the following player coming in, uh, Negri, I believe, is, I believe it was, uh, just brushes past him um, in, a, in an attempt to make a legitimate clear out. So there's been varying consistency in that area. Um, so I think this this new directive uh, from well rugby in regards to head contact and foul play, because it encompasses more than just head contact. Uh, I think world rugby have been reactionary in that regard. Um, I think they've not been very proactive. I think they they are panicking a little bit in regards to potential uh, lawsuits that may or may not come uh, considering uh, you know the, the, the knowledge we now know around concussion CTE and also repetitive injuries and, and career ending injuries I think where world rugby has failed and a lot of sports have failed in the past uh, is looking after players when they have to retire because of injury and in this case let's say we use a concussion and CTE as an example and they haven't really looked after players post playing um, and I think World Rugby is, is quite mindful that there could be a lot of litigation coming their way. This is where I think they've been a bit re reactive rather than, than proactive, just by bringing in stronger HIA protocols and, and concussion stand-down periods. I think other sports are much further ahead uh, in that regard. I use Rugby League and, and ice hockey as, as two prime examples of sports that seem to take a more proactive approach when it comes especially to concussion and, and player welfare now because of previous incidents and, and issues in the past. And uh, so I think that's causing confusion on the field. On the same token, we have seen a varying level of consistency from game to game uh, because of interpretation of the laws. This is something that frustrates me quite quite often with a lot of sports, but in, in this case, it's a major showpiece tournament. Uh, it's World Rugby's biggest event, and we are seeing varying levels of consistency over similar uh, uh, issues. So it could be offside, it, it could be... Um, you know, on, uh, on on the breakdown, holding on, for example, just your basic refereeing areas. The scrum is, in my opinion, still a shambles, and World Rugby have definitely got the scrum laws wrong. Um, I think since 2003, we, we've seen the scrum just become a complete and utter mess. The ball is no longer fed in straight. There's no longer both hookers trying to hook the ball. And so scrummaging has now just become a complete and utter lottery and a complete and utter mess. Uh, in regards to the high contact we have seen uh, and head contact, we have seen really varying levels of consistency. And I mentioned uh, the two reds and the yellow, um, where they're all very similar incidents. <clears throat> two have been upgraded. One has stayed as a yellow. Uh, and that was in the first two were in uh, 12 hours of each other. So the Tom Curry incident against Argentina 
and the Segrin incident against Japan were refereed completely differently in the sense that like the TMO says we've seen that potential to meet the yellow card threshold. Now, they're both basically carbon copies, in my opinion, um, and they've had differing outcomes. Now, that's where I think the consistency, we, we need to set a precedent. If Tom Curry's is a red, then any future potential should be a red. Uh, we're also seeing the referees less likely to give a red on the field for, for that foul play. Um, because they're now relying on the TMO to, to do a check for them. Uh, I say give the powers back to the on-field refs if they do deem it as, as as serious enough for a red there and then let them have the power to send a player off. I also think with the amount of yellow cards we are seeing, there were three in the Italy-Uruguay game, for example, that that is going to have a massive bearing on a, a, a really important game, like a final pool stage match where the winner will qualify for the knockout stages. The loser may finish in third or fourth place, or maybe even the final could be decided if it's a very even game by that by that yellow card, potentially a red card. Are we seeing too many sin binnings and send offs in the game right now? Because I don't know where we've gone over the last twenty years. Uh, or even the last you know, 24 years, but we're definitely seeing a, a, a massive increase in the amount of yellows and reds. Um, uh, and, uh, or it seems, perception wise, it seems to be the case. And it is having a massive bearing on the game. They want to speed up the game, they want to make the game faster and more attractive to casual fans to buy in because obviously rugby league is, is the faster form of the game. Uh, when, when rugby splits into the two codes. So rugby league is a much uh, quicker paced uh, game where the ball stays in play longer, sometimes for, for lengthy, lengthy spells. And they want to obviously incorporate speeding up play, making it less stop-start. But then when these TMO reviews, sometimes they're taking several minutes. So play stops again and it becomes stop-start. So have they got those rule impl in, 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 um, implementations right? Um it has been refreshing, as I say, on a, on a viewing standpoint, to see more teams willing to run the ball from deep. That has been refreshing. I think that some of the rule changes, especially around kicking with the 50-22, uh, that uh, you know, World Rugby won again in place. They are very aware that as a visual product, uh, there are times where the game stops and starts and there's constant whistles and penalties and free kicks and the game does become stop-start. The ball is in play for less time. So... I don't know. I think they they may have got this this TMO review area wrong. I think they've been a bit reactionary in some of you know we need refereeing by common sense. Um, we we need to obviously clear up the game from deliberate foul play like no arms tackle, shoulder charges, um, you know, cannonball tackles towards the legs. We've seen a few of them where there's there's deliberate late hits on players when they're not expecting it around the knees and and, and hip area, which can well end careers a bad hip or bad knee injury and you are done and people have a hip injury hip resurfacing you're never going to be the same player a few players in both league and union have had hip resurfacing and they've pretty much retired within 12 months of that operation uh, it's basically an operation you get after you have a severe motorcycle accident when you, you crash your motorcycle at a very high speed to have hip resurfacing it's also uh, halfway to a full hip replacement so that's when you're a much older person, you know, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, ligament issues. Uh, you normally have that operation in your 60s and your 70s for, for, for medical reasons if you, you do have a degenerative uh, joint condition or after uh, a severe motorcycle or car accident. So, yes, we want to see foul play taken out of the game. Um, but I do think the referee consistency now is, is not there. So that's my view on things so far. I'm hoping that yellows and reds don't determine outcomes of, of important knockout games like quarterfinals, semi-finals and the final. And maybe even some of these really crucial group games like Ireland South Africa. I think we could see some yellow cards in that game because of the, the style of play both sides play. The Irish like the, the choke tackle and the South Africans like that forward dominance power game. The Irish also particularly like that forward dominance power game as well. That's going to be a, a titanic struggle with two big packs, uh, two very mobile packs packs as well and of course some very big outside backs so there's going to be a lot of collisions in that game 
uh, and, and both sides do tend to like uh, the physical battle in the sense of uh, competing at the breakdown. The choke tackle, um, which has been regularly criticised by, by some in the rugby media. And uh, the scrum is going to be brutal. We, I think the South Africa uh, Ireland game could, could produce some yellows, which could uh, ultimately determine uh, the outcome of uh, what could potentially be one of the best games of rugby we, we ever see. Um, we'll have to see how weather conditions also play out, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, for me, for now, thank you very much for watching and uh, place your thoughts on the current uh, refereeing standards, rule changes uh, in the comments section below. I know we're going to have a difference of opinion on the TMI yellow red card review process. I, th I think give the power back to the on-field referee to say, look, that is a red, that is a yellow, that's case done, let the... Uh, disciplinary committee deal with it post-match if they feel it should be upgraded or downgraded like it used to be uh, because I think we're spending far too much time now um, you know with those TMOs it does disrupt the flow of the game uh, I think yeah give, give a bit more power back to the on-field officials I think they were doing a fine job beforehand and um, uh, that's my view on that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll have some more content for you soon. We've got a lot of games in the Rugby World Cup today to look forward to and tomorrow. So from me for now, it is goodbye.